Hi, I'm Dave, Fellering Guide. Um, I've done some previous videos where I've looked at comparing the Coros Optical Arm Strap Heart Rate Monitor with the Garmin Chest Strap. Um, I'll put some links at the top of the uh, the page here if you want to have a look at those. Um, and generally I've been quite happy with the results, found that the Coros was quite accurate um, and I've started to use it as my default um, heart rate monitor just because it's a bit more comfortable and it doesn't drop down when you're running fast um, you know as, as the Garmin chest strap does sometimes but just recently I've um, had to s sort of had cause to suspect the readings a little bit and I wasn't sure whether it was reading accurately so I've done another test where I've worn both the the Coros and the Garmin at the same time recorded the uh, the, the Coros data on the Coros Apex 2 Pro and the Garmin data on the Phoenix 5. Um, so let's have a look at the, the results. Just a word about the arm strap before we start. Um, so I haven't got any tattoos, I'm not particularly hairy or dark skinned, um, not particularly fat nor muscular so there's no reason why um, the arm strap shouldn't um, record accurately um, and I wear it in the, the same position on the same arm as I have done for previous tests. So I went out at the weekend and did about an hour's run on, um, yeah, easy run on trail and fell type terrain, dry conditions. So let's have a look at what we can see. This to start off with is the, um, the Garmin heart rate trace. So as we start, you can see that heart rate rises as I run um, and then gets a, a, a steady state where my heart rate has increased enough to do the work I'm asking it to do and it plateaus off. So let's just take some time stamps. So if we look at um, one minute here, my heart rate is 106 beats per minute. That is um, on the Garmin. If we look at the Coros, we've got a similar thing, um, a steep rise and then plateaus off. Let's go and have a look at one minute. So here, the heart rate is only 88 beats per minute. So it's quite a, a difference between the, the two there. Uh, the Coros is lagging behind. And then let's go along till we get to two minutes and see what happens here. So at two minutes on the um, the Coros, we've got 104 beats per minute. And then here, if we go to two minutes on the Garmin, we can see that 118 beats per minute. So already we've got a, a 14 beat per minute difference. So the, the Coros is lagging behind. So if we look from two minutes along we've got this steady state and you can see the heart rate is fluctuating between you know roughly 122 beats per minute sometimes up to 124 it's a little bit down back to 118 um but probably averaging around 122 beats per minute all the way along here to um 15 minutes so that's kind of steady with slight fluctuations Now, if we look at the Coros, see this here, 105 beats per minute, and it's not changing at all. So from two and, two and a half minutes, well, just two, two minutes, 10 seconds, 105, and it's 105 all the way along to three minutes, three and a half minutes. So we've got a, a big, um, you know, point of time there over a minute where the heart rate doesn't change at all not not one fluctuation not up or down one beat so I'm kind of suspect about that I'd expect um, you know slight slight rise and fall um, and then here it's not until we get to what is it over eight minutes not till we get to eight and a half minutes that the chorus catches up to 120 beats per minute so we've got that lag again 
um, and then it does flatten off somewhat along here um, and that's what I would expect see how the heart rate is going up and down slightly okay so now let's have a look at this bit here just around 20 minutes so we're back on the Garmin trace here and I've put this elevation profile in here so you can see what happens here I drop down 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 and I cross the stream so I was going slowly down and actually I was trying to cross the stream without getting my feet wet so I was balancing on the stone so my effort decreased uh, and that's reflected here where you see my heart rate decrease so my heart rate drops as I'm going down the hill and it um, gets to a low point here 19 minutes 46 seconds my heart rate is 101 beats per minute so let's see what the Koros makes of that um, drop okay so all the trace long 1945 there my heart rate is still 133 beats per minute on the Koros so we've got that lag and there's a 30 um, beats per minute discrepancy between the two there um, and then it's not till we get to um, over 20 minutes 20 minutes 15 seconds that the the chorus bottoms out on the heart rate trace but even there it only goes down to 126 beats per minute rather than down to 101 so yeah that's another discrepancy between the two and then from this point here 21 minutes all the way along to 26 minutes we've got an average just below 140 beats per minute um, we can see on the Garmin, similar, um, 138, 140, right the way through to 26 minutes. And then at this point here, my heart rate drops off all the way again. Um, and this was where um, I, I passed the chap and he was just asking me directions. So I, I stopped and had a bit of a chat with him. So again, let's have a look at um, a comparison and see if the heart rates drop off at the same uh, rate. So let's have a look at 26 minutes. So on the Garmin, at 26 minutes, the heart rate is 127 beats per minute. Whereas if we look at the Coros, 137 beats per minute. So again, the Coros is lagging behind. Um, the low point here, 81 beats per minute, drops down to 80 beats per minute at 29 and a half minutes. And then with the Garmin, similar low point, 79 beats per minute, 78 beats per minute, so pretty similar. But notice the time here, 29.05. So um, the, the Coros didn't record the low point till 29 and a half minutes. Whereas here, 29 and a half minutes, I've started running again and my heart rate is um, 96 beats per minute. So again, we've got this lag with the Koros. Okay, so there's a bit of a difference there, but then um, something much more significant later in the run. So let's look at what happens between 30 and 40 minutes. So here I've got back to steady state. Um, this is the um, the Garmin trace, so 140 beats per minute here, um, dropping down 132 beats per minute, at about 40, 40 minutes there, 130 beats per minute at 40, and then looking at the Coros 130s, and then we've got a uh, a steep rise here and then we're in the 140s there so uh, 40 minutes we're actually 10 beats per minute higher 140 beats okay so uh, a little bit higher there here um, I just stopped to investigate some interesting boulders so I just took a um, a minute or so looking at these my heart rate drops down to 113 beats per minute um, on the Coros but look what happens on the Garmin 
actually drops much lower down to 88 beats per minute um, and it's then once we get going again at around sort of from 45 to 50 minutes that the the big um, discrepancy lies so you can see um, on the Garmin start running again but this trace here is pretty similar here to what it was before I stopped similar terrain uh, similar pace and effort so heart rate averaging in the, in the 130s there and then 140 beats per minute there so if we look at let's have a look at 49 minutes 138 beats per minute on the Garmin but look what happens on the Coros rather than being the same um, pace here as it was before that brief stop it rises and it continues rising and it continues rising and here this is pretty close to my maximum right so I'm running along at an easy pace and my heart rate is doing 178 beats per minute the maximum I've ever recorded is 180 one beats per minute and then here if we go along to that 49 minutes my heart rate according to the chorus is 184 beats per minute well it's never been that high ever so there's something definitely wrong there that there's no way that i was giving absolutely maximum effort on that so um yeah that was concerning that I was not not concerning about my heart rate I was quite happy I felt fine but concerning that the the watch was recording wrong so I just simply stopped um, and the heart rate gradually came down and um, it got down to 97 beats per minute after 51 minutes and if we look at happened what what happened on the Garmin well similar thing 90 96 beats per minute so the the back reading the same there so um yeah it's uh, it's strange that it it seems to have sorted itself out there um and um you know both both the garmin and the the chorus are saying the same thing and then for the last part of the run i carried on um kind of steady effort and then for the last three minutes I put in um, a faster paced effort and on my Garmin my heart rate got up to 166 beats per minute after 104 minutes which is what I would expect it felt that felt right so let's see if the chorus did the same so here's where I set off again um, and note that the course didn't jump back up to that ridiculously high level so back here is back uh, what I would expect and then here's this point where I put in a, a harder effort um, and whilst it does pick up again it doesn't get up to that 160 odd beats per minute um, it's still maybe 15 beats per minute lower so yeah it's a bit frustrating really this there, there are times where i think during the run the the course is accurate and it is what i would expect and there are other times that it's it's way way wrong this bit in here it, yeah is a definite fault there um, and it seems slow to pick up on changes so almost like once i'm going and i'm running and hit a steady state um, the Coros matches the Garmin but when I slow down or when my effort decreases the the um, the heart rate decline isn't picked up as quickly on the Coros and when I then increase effort again it isn't picked up um, as quickly so there's a lag both sides so um, yeah feel free to make any comments if you have similar experiences Thanks for watching.